Now for the sport, I'm Gary Al Smith. So tonight, it's make or break for the IU brothers. And let's check what's happening in that Premier League game as Swansea and Southampton play. As it stands, looks like the brothers will be on their way to being relegated because a goal from Manolo Gabbiadini has put a dagger in their hopes of staying up. 85 minutes gone. And um, they'll need... A miracle of significant proportions in the final game. Swansea will be playing. And um, yeah, it's 86 minutes now. It's currently Southampton 1. Right, so we will show you the goal later. That goal was scored by Manolo Gabbiadini. We'll show you in a bit as well. And in the Ghana Premier League, there's news still ongoing, as you may know. Week 13 and 14 games have been postponed to make way for Adriana, who have a lot of outstanding matches to play. According to the Premier League board, this is to ensure that the calendar is finished on time. The reason is that uh, there are a number of um, outstanding matches involving uh, Adriana Stars due to their continuous involvement in the CAF Confederations Cup. And some of the outstanding matches were also uh, caused by circumstances beyond our control. Example, uh, the match that was called off between Wild wow Stars and um, Adriana Stars in Cape Coast due to power failure and a faulty generator. Uh, so far, there are six outstanding games in, involving Adriana Stars, and then there is also the outstanding match between Bukum Chelsea and Mina uh, Sharks. And the first round, is uh, just uh, three matches away. And the concern is that uh, there has to be a level playing field. Uh, the league team has to be at par. So that it's important to revise the fixtures to enable Indiana Stars to clear their outstanding matches so that we can have a complete uh, view of the league table. Apart from that, it's not like... Uh, Indiana are also out of Africa. They will, be, they will be playing in the Confederations Cup. They will continue their participation in the second round, uh, meaning they have, uh, so far they played one match, they have five games to go. So we want to have a, a revised fixture which will take into consideration uh, their future con uh, Confederations Cup match and then uh, projected outstanding matches and make rooms for such uh, outstanding matches uh, to be cleared so that at the, by the time we get to the uh, end of the or get into the end of the competition there won't be uh, enough outstanding games as uh, the league uh, gets to a close. Speaking of the Ghana Premier League, what are you making of Asante Kozakos' performance? They've not been impressive for a lot of their fans. In fact, their best player, arguably, has been their goalkeeper, Felix Anand. And he's saying that he would like his colleagues to up their performance as the league continues um, on match day 13. As you said, uh, as Kos said, you know, we, we, are, we are all players and then football is not a one-man one -month sport. I am a goalkeeper and I have a chance to play. And then the defenders are helping me. If if I win out of the match, you know, it's, it's a plus. But for me, I will always, even I always say, I will always exchange, consider and go for a win. Then, you know, keeping a clean sheet. Because the team comes first. I want the team to win. You know, personal glories are, are, are bonuses. So if you talk about, say, defenders, I will not, I will not buy that. Because it's a collective game and everybody is helping. We all try. Sometimes there are lapses. You know, we all make mistakes. But it doesn't mean say if I'm winning, if I'm winning one of the margins, the other colleagues are not doing well. They are doing their best, and they are trying their best. Sometimes when we not call, we are all worried. You know, I'm not happy. I'll make saves. I want to do saves. I want to keep the team always in the game. If I'm trying to keep the, the, the team in the game by doing my saves, at least you give confidence to the players. Also, it's the same way if the players call, they also give us the the, 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 the back line, the confidence. You know to. Okay, so it's a collective game, and then any any any, any accolade I'm having as a bonus, I will I will congratulate my teammates because they helped me do that. Felix Anan was named man of the match in their last game at the weekend as well, and Asante Kotoko are eighth on the table with 17 points. They are four points off the top place team, Ashgold. 
In athletics, what has become of Martha Bisa? She became nicknamed Ghana's Golden Girl after her exploits in Nanjing to win the, the Youth Olympics. But since then, she's gone to the United States to school and has been competing at the Norfolk University. And now, she's won 10 gold medals in less than two years. The majority of her life, Martha Bisa has been used to hearing the word first. After all, she won a gold medal in the 800 meter dash at the 2014 Summer Youth Olympics. The first gold medal at any level in any sport for her native country, Ghana. Three years later, Martha trekked 5,000 miles across the globe to attend Norfolk State University. Adjusting to life far away from all she knew would turn out to be her hardest long distance run yet. As time went on, Martha realized her new family are the people she laces her spikes up with, especially her running partner, Candice Higgins. Hailing from Kingston, Jamaica, Higgins is a junior long distance runner who went through a similar culture shock in her journey to America. Although there have been an adjustment period for Martha in America, she hasn't had to do much differently on the track. Before she leaves Norfolk State, she wants to have her picture among the Spartan greats that line the steady halls. Kenneth Giles, the director of Spartan's track and field program, says she's doing well on her way to that goal. One Olympic goal down, visions will eventually turn to Tokyo. But for now, the Mid-Eastern Athletics Championship titles will do. In rugby, the Africa Bronze Cup is still upon us. Ghana is set to host the tournament at the Indom Stadium from tomorrow. Here's a report by Hans Pensando. All is set for the 2018 Rugby Africa Bronze Cup to be hosted by Ghana. The national rugby football team, the Eagles, who are the lowest ranked team in the competition, was quiet up with Rwanda, Mauritius and Lesotho in their quest to win the trophy on home soil. The competition was scheduled to come off at the Cape Coast Stadium, but the four-day event has been moved to the Indom Stadium in Elmina. President of the Ghana Rugby Football Union, Herbert Mensah, has been given reasons for the change in venue. We put in a bid a while ago. By the time we finish with our bid, Accra Stadium is now being refurbished. So we won the bid, we're here in Ghana, Accra, in Ghana. And logistically, we have to go elsewhere. So where do we go? We go to Cape Coast. But we go to Cape Coast, and we are then told by the NSA that to play at the stadium and use the facilities, we should pay 36 or 40,000 seats. So getting to $10,000 to wear the national shirt for Ghana, you see, that should immediately tell you that there's something wrong in Ghana. There are people who simply don't get it. You don't try and steal and take the blood of the very people you're supposed to support. When you're doing good, there's somebody trying to make sure that you fail. The 2018 Rugby Africa Bronze Cup begins on the 9th of May and ends on the 12th of May. The winner of the competition will earn a place in the Silver Cup, which will be played later this year. We finish with international tennis as the Madrid Open continues. Guess who beat Benoit Pair to progress to the next round? Rising star Denis Shapovalov was hoping to enhance his reputation even further when he met the experienced Bernard Pair in the second round of the Madrid Open. This was their very first meeting and it was clear from the get-go that they both adopted the patient approach. But the Frenchman was first to strike, breaking in the ninth to gain the upper hand. The advantage, however, was short-lived as Shapovalov broke back in the subsequent game as the set led to a tiebreaker. Quicker across the court with a meaner swing, Shapovalov had the edge in the breaker, 7-5. The second was a similar story except for a little role reversal. Pear drew first blood in the eighth, breaking the youngster to take a 5-3 lead. On serve, needing another game to level matters, the Frenchman buckled and Shapovalov broke back. The set was a roller coaster of an affair with yet another twist thrown into the mix as Pear sealed yet another break point, this one proving most valuable as he won the set. With matters evenly poised, Shapovalov knew that he needed to find an extra gear to defeat the durable Frenchman. He did so in the fifth game of the deciding set with his third break point of the match. He failed to relinquish that advantage with Pei unable to find another break, as the young gun picked up a brand new scalp, sending him to the third round. Uh, let's begin. Let's finish by going to where we began the bulletin. Andre and Jordan, what's their fate? Have they been able to equalize? The answer is a no. You can see tears there as we finish. One minute more in the game. Swansea staring down the barrel of relegation. They have one more game to go. However, that will be against Stoke City, who are already relegated. The other issue is that Southampton play Manchester City. Now, you would think that Man City will take it easy because they've already won the title. But City are also chasing history. Don't forget that they want to break the 
record for the number of points won in the Premier League season. They have 94 now. The record is 96. If they win against Southampton, they'll have 97. So there's no guarantee that Southampton will not have it easy or will have it easy against Manchester City. We'll come back to you now. This is what the Premier League table looks like after as it stands now. Southampton go improved to 16th on 36 points because they have three points in the bag as we speak. Swansea are in the drop zone on 33. What this means is that if this finishes in the next few seconds, officially West Brom are relegated from the Premier League. So they also needed Swansea to win because the Wells team have not won, they will also go down. So Swansea will have 33 ahead of playing with Stoke. And the game is over now. Southampton celebration. They know that even if they lose against Man City, it's very likely that uh, they will stay up because, I, I forgot to mention, they have a far better goal difference than Swansea City. So what this will mean, and I'll explore it more on the football show at 10.30, Jordan Ayew especially will have an ignominious record in his name. This will be the third time he has been relegated. He was relegated with Sochaux in 2013-2014 when he was loaned with them. And then, and then um, he was also relegated when he came to the English top flight with Aston Villa. They went into the championship. He's come and now it looks like he'll be set for relegation as well. Not good for his ra track record. But Huddersfield have a game tomorrow as well, which won't mean much because they are doing well so far.